you a little bit of an idea of the amazing career and job that this uh, gentleman has, we've got a little video presentation to start things off this morning. American culture of characters is always shaped by a handful of people with extraordinary vision. Compass Entertainment has been shaping our cultural heritage for over 30 years. Located at Universal Studios, Compass Entertainment is owned and operated by Greg McDonald, who has for the past three decades maintained his place as a renowned force in the entertainment world. Beginning in the 60s, Greg formed a lifelong personal and business relationship with manager Colonel Tom Parker and his legendary client, Elvis Presley. Under the mentorship of the Colonel, Greg became one of music's top visionaries. Throughout the 70s, Greg's business expanded to include professional associations, music icon Sonny and Cher, the Eagles, Jerry Lee Lewis, Pat Domino, and for 17 years was a personal manager and friend of legendary artist Ricky Nelson. Synonymous with Compass Entertainment, Greg was a driving force behind Silver Eagle Records and Time Life Music, two of the most successful direct response marketing businesses in music history. Compass Entertainment's other endeavors also include entertainment-related real estate, like Elvis Presley's Palm Springs Hideaway, Field of Dreams, the sports collectibles retail chain with over 30 stores nationwide, Sun Studios in Palm Springs, California, a live concert venue, recording studio, and television production center, where our producers created and distributed hit syndicated television series, like the Morton Downey Jr. Show. Sunny and Cher and what was built from nothing, and what was built from nothing, I feel at least a 50% contributor to, so, Maybe more than 50%. Maybe more, at least. The, the television production division of Compass Entertainment has been a leader in innovative television programming, producing music videos, commercials, and broadcast television shows for major networks worldwide. Compass owns or administrates one of the most sought-after music and television libraries in the world, featured in numerous television shows, commercials, and feature film soundtracks, like Universal Pictures' Casino, starring Robert De Niro, and The Waterboy, starring Adam Sandler. The Compass Library represents some of the most rare music titles and videos ever recorded. In recent years, Compass Entertainment has been a key advisor and consultant to the company responsible for shaping music icons, NSYNC, The Backstreet Boys, Aaron Carter, and O-Town, generating revenues of over $2.2 billion in retail sales, and the creation of the ABC Network hit TV show, Making the Band, and now continues that track record with worldwide lifestyle and special interest programs like the Luxury Connection and Heritage Report. Compass has now expanded its media reach with print publications like Makes and Models Magazine, featuring exotic automobiles and beautiful models, and the very popular Rounder, the Casino Lifestyle Magazine. With the popularity of poker and celebrity attention, Rounder Magazine has jumped off the pages into a new reality TV series produced by Compass, Rounder Life TV. Compass and its producers have gone beyond broadcast television and print with the production of feature films, including Deal, starring Burt Reynolds and Shannon Elizabeth, Supercross, first place was five hundred thousand dollars. Two brothers who've never been given a chance. This is the greatest race the sport has ever seen. Best bikes, now is track. And other family-oriented films like Pop Star, starring Aaron Carter, and Motocross Kids. Each of these motion pictures has achieved successful distribution worldwide through companies such as Warner Brothers, Universal Pictures, New Line Cinema, and 20th Century Fox. Compass Entertainment historically connected to yesterday, producing dynamic, quality entertainment today and for years to come. Elvis Festival, welcome to Greg McDonald.
Welcome, Greg. Welcome, Neil. It's nice to see you. Is that on? Let's have a look. Hello, hello. Nope. Keep sound here. Two, one, two. Yeah, there we go. Hello, Neil. Hello, Greg. Please take a seat. And, uh, well, it's good to have you here at the Elvis Festival. Uh, it's great to be here. Your first Elvis Festival with us, with Strictly Elvis. Absolutely. This is fun. Yeah. This is fun. Sure. Um, some of the people who were with us in August may, uh, may have seen Greg because you came to our guest house gala at Graceland. I sure did. I so sure did. Some of you may recognize him from that evening, but. We're, uh, we're, it's wonderful to have Greg here, as well as our other two guests, Charles and Dick here for uh, Elvis Festival Week. Who are they? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let's let's start where any good story starts, at the very beginning. So, um, Greg, where, where are you from originally? Actually, I'm from Central California, but uh, really spent most of my time in the Palm Springs area, which is Southern California. Of course, and Palm Springs um, plays a quite a major part in not only Elvis' story, but in uh, Colonel Tom Parker's as well. It was it was the Colonel's full time home and uh, part time home for Elvis. So, how old were you when you relocated to Palm Springs? Well, it was odd. My uh, childhood, I, my mother had passed when I was very young, and uh, I was traveling with a, a tent show. Uh, Oral Roberts. I don't know if you know who Oral Roberts was from over here, but he was a preacher. And we used to travel with his 10,000 seat tent. And uh, I, would, I would be at his revival show and the kids, the preacher's kids, my dad was a preacher. So the kids would, would pass the hat the velvet hat down the rows and collect the money and put it in 50 gallon drums. And then we would have to set the chairs, setting the tent, a 10,000 seat tent used to belong to Ringling Brothers Circus. So uh, it was a chore. And then on off weeks, we would go, my dad and I would go to Palm Springs because he was an air conditioning mechanic. And uh, odd twist of jobs, but I was just a little kid, nine, 10 years old. And they used to send me up to these big mansions up in Palm Springs, California, these big homes up there. And I was on a bicycle and I was changing filters. I had a rack and I was changing filters. And um, I'm, I'm in this big house and uh, I don't even know who the house is. I found out later it belonged to Jack Warner, the famous movie maker. And uh, I'm inside the house and in the hall of the house, there's a door and you have to go underneath the, the, the furnace, the, the, you know, you have to get under there to change a filter. So I crawl under there and I don't think anybody's home. And uh, I have a little hip joint toolbox down at my feet outside and I'm laying on my back. And uh, I'm trying to reach for screwdrivers and tools and I can't get them because there's this little white poodle dog keeps jumping in this toolbox <laughs> and, and trying to bite me. Well, like I say, I'm just a little kid, but I'm cursing this dog pretty bad. And I think no one's home, and I'm cursing this little dog. And, and I look down between my feet, and there's this face. I know who this is. It's Elvis Presley. And he's, he's laughing at me. He says, what are you doing under there, kid? And I said, well, I'm trying to change your filters. And he says, come out from under there. Come out from under there. So I come out, it's Elvis standing in a rope. And uh, he says, what are you doing? I says, well, I'm trying to change your filter, but your little dog's trying to eat me up. So he picks up this poodle dog and he's laughing. He's really laughing at me. And, and uh, he says, this isn't my dog. It's, it belongs to a girl I'm here with this weekend. She's out there by the pool. So I look out by the pool and there's a girl out there and she's totally naked. <laughs> and Elvis is so cool that he goes over and he shuts the drape because I'm not supposed to be looking at this girl. And so he goes over and shuts the drape and he's laughing through this whole experience. And uh, he says, well, what is your story? What are, you, are you a mechanic? I said, no, my, my dad's the refrigeration mechanic and I'm just changing filters. I make a buck a house. 
So, so he now he says, well, well, tell me more. I said, well, during the week, uh, we work for Brother Oral Roberts in a big circus tent. And he says, I know Oral Roberts. He's an Assembly of God preacher. I said, well, yeah, he is. And, and he says, your dad's an Assembly of God preacher. I said, yeah, that's true. And he says, well, then you must be an Assembly of God kid. That's how I grew up in Tupelo. I went to the Assembly of God church. So this goes on and on and on. And we're talking about all kinds of crazy stuff from that church. And he said, tell me. He said, did they bring rattlesnakes to your church? And the, the, the evangelists come to the church and, and handle rat, live snakes? I said, yeah, they did. And he said, he says, did that scare you? And, and Elvis is telling me this. I'm going, of course. He says, because if you've been bad that week, one of the snakes allegedly was going to bite you. So uh, he had really done that a lot in Tupelo. And he says, I hated those guys. So odd conversation. The phone rings. He answers the phone, and he answers, it's somebody named the Colonel on the phone. So, so he says, he's answering the Colonel, and he says, uh, I got this funny kid over here, and he, he's, he, he works for Oral Roberts, and he, and he does air conditioning. So, and the Colonel said, well, send him over here, I want, him my, I want to change my filters too, because it was only two blocks away. So, I spoke to Elvis a little longer, a lot of funny, funny things. He, we weren't talking show business, we were talking about everything but. So he, I left, I took my bike, went over to the Colonel, and I'm expecting to see some military guy, right? And I don't know who Colonel Parker is. So I go and knock on the door, and uh, he answers the door, and he's in his robe, you know? So I go in, and we're talking about the same things, and it goes on and on and on, and I stayed about 27 years. It's <laughs> not too bad. <laughs> so backtracking a little bit there, you said your father being a preacher. How much of Elvis, about Elvis, did you know? Did you listen to him growing up? Because I imagine in the 1950s, Elvis wasn't looked upon favorably by many preachers, as he wasn't by most of middle America in the 1950s. So. How much did you know about Elvis growing up? Did you hear him on the radio? Did you own his records? Were you a fan? I, I didn't really own Elvis records because I didn't have the money. And my older sister had played Elvis on the radio constantly. And I, I loved Elvis, but I was really a little kid. And uh, no, if you were an Elvis Presley fan in the Assembly of God Church, you were going straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> So obviously after that meeting with the first meeting with the colonel there, um, how did it evolve from there? Because from what I understand, you were then sort of almost taken in and made part of the family, part of the Parker family to an extent. So how did it sort of carry on from that very initial meeting? Well, the colonel's wife, Marie, you know, she thought it was awful that I wasn't going to school a lot. I really wasn't doing that much school. I was going back and forth from this big, tent revival to Palm Springs to do air conditioning, and I would go to school sometimes. Well, the colonel thought that was terrible, and they had no children. So he said, why don't you come over here during school and go back to your dad when, when you're working? So I did that for, for many years. You know, and I'd stay there for, oh, you know, a month or so, and then I'd go back with my dad. But uh, And then I spent, as I got to be a a teenager, I started staying there all the time and doing work for the colonel. And um, the colonel basically worked on the patio. All of these Elvis projects you see or hear, most people don't understand that those weren't done in Hollywood. Those were done in Palm Springs, California on some plastic furniture in the backyard next to the colonel's cookhouse where all the major movie deals were done. <laughs> it really wasn't in a Hollywood office at William Morris Agency. It was really at the Colonel's house, you know. 